Every time I come up to Nova Scotia, it's always for like an extended period of time, a few weeks or, or a month or so, and, and I'm always here at this park like once a week. It's, it's got a great visitor center, good cake, good tea, everyone's very friendly, and, and just sitting out here is so nice. Now, in making this little ad hoc documentary that we're putting up here on YouTube, we've uncovered well, a couple of mysteries, but one in particular is where are people buried? We know of the mass grave right here for the Protestants at St. Paul's Old Church, and we know of the mass grave for the Catholics in um, Star of the Sea Cemetery just down the road. So that covers most of them. Now there's also Purser Ambrose Worthington in Camp Hill Cemetery in Halifax, but there are rumored to be six burials in Camp Hill Cemetery. Now, we've been to the archives, we've talked to people there, we've talked to people who are with the cemetery, and we've talked to Atlantic historians, and people don't know of any other than Purser Worthington. Now, Officer Metcalf is supposedly buried in an unmarked grave near Worthington. All right, so that's two. But this is a mystery that's actually been driving me crazy and we've been driving all over the place trying to figure it out and we've been looking into the archives and we've been looking into documents and I've been doing all sorts of Google search. I even made an Ancestry.com account just to try to figure this one out and I can't. Um, there is the story of Lauriston and Lillian Davidson. They were cabin passengers, and cabin, of course, is the equivalent to first class, cabin passengers aboard the SS Atlantic, and they died. Their bodies were recovered a few days after the sinking. They were pulled out of the sea. They were still inside the ship, and according to some amateur autopsy, they decided that they died of suffocation rather than drowning. All records say they were buried in Camp Hill Cemetery, which is in downtown Halifax. There's even a photograph of the grave that says their names, that says April 1st, 1873. But no one recognizes that photo. No one knows where that is. It's got to be some obscure cemetery somewhere, or the stone is gone. But Camp Hill Cemetery does not have a record of them having been buried there. And people who look at the photo say, that's not here. So no one knows what it is. It's an old black and white photo, but even there, we're not certain. Someone could have taken it recently and just made it black and white. So it's a, it's a mystery that's really baffling everyone. And if you look online, it's on Ancestry.com, it's on some of the grave apps, but it's always different uploaders. So my assumption is they're all just downloading it from some other website and re-uploading it. So, so no one who's uploading it even really knows as far as I'm aware. So to me, the mystery of the Davidsons, who was a mother and a daughter, they really personalize the disaster of the Atlantic because they're forgotten. We know so very little about them. We don't even know where they're buried. We have this photograph and rumors but we don't know where they are. We know so little about them. Now, I think it's safe to assume they weren't brought back to England, which is where they were from. I think that's very safe to assume, considering the condition of the body, and that their widower and their father, he's already dead. He died a few years before the disaster. So, he wouldn't be bringing them back. I just think they are the perfect epitome of the disaster. Completely forgotten, unknown, and so little remains of it. They were on the ship to go to the United States. They weren't even going to New York, which is where the ship was going. No one was waiting in New York City for them. They were going to continue on to California to visit Lauriston's brother. He lived in Telegraph City, California, which even further emphasizes my point about how forgotten the Atlantic is and all of this story is, because Telegraph City doesn't even exist anymore. It's a ghost town. Literally, no one lives there. It's just ruins. It's both a testament to how forgotten and unknown the Atlantic is, but also how time just goes by. And almost 150 years later, almost everything from the Atlantic is gone. Very little remains. What does remain is either in the Heritage Park right here or in the Maritime Museum in Halifax. 
or on the bottom of the ocean right here. And even there, it's almost all ruined and gone. The SS Atlantic is a very forgotten disaster. It's one of the first major disasters of the White Star Line and certainly one of the biggest shipping disasters of the 1800s and the biggest one for the White Star Line up until the Titanic. And, and yet, it's so forgotten. So very few people even know this is here and are aware that 560 some people were lost just a few feet from the shore here in Nova Scotia. I always found it ironic, in fact, in a, a very dark humor kind of irony. The three biggest maritime disasters for Nova Scotia is the SS Atlantic in 1873, the Titanic in 1912, and people here count that as a Nova Scotian disaster because they were basically the closest real harbor and the bodies were brought into it, and the Halifax explosion in 1917. Now, the SS Atlantic and the RMS Titanic are both White Star Line ships, but the Halifax explosion occurred when a Norwegian ship called the Emo collided with a uh, munitions ship from France, the Mont Blanc. It caught fire and exploded. But what a lot of people don't know is that the Emo was the former White Star Liner Runic. So again, they were all White Star Line ships in all three of the biggest maritime disasters in Nova Scotia. And the irony with dark humor is Samuel Cunard, the number one rival of the White Star Line, was born and raised and lived in Halifax. Halifax was the home of the Cunard Lines for the longest time. So I find it morbidly humorous that their number one rival is just messing up their province. If you ever visit Nova Scotia, and I know a lot of you will be doing that, or at least hope to, considering most of you are Titanic fans, and I know you guys would someday want to come out and see the graves of the Titanic victims and the three cemeteries in Halifax. If you do visit, be sure to come out here to Lower Prospect in Terrence Bay and visit the Atlantic Heritage Park. It's a wonderful visit. It's free, but certainly worth a donation. You can get your coffee, you can get your tea and your cake, and just visit the site of the first major White Star Line disaster.